So these example problems we're going to solve are involving horizontally launched projectiles. And so these problems, they're the easier version of projectile problems, right? So they're horizontally launched because they take off with some velocity in the x dimension. But here, right, their initial velocity in the y dimension is zero. So as these things, remember, we're thinking about the motion in the y direction and the motion in the x direction, right? And so in the x direction, this thing has a constant velocity the whole time. But in the y direction, it's like dropping something. So it starts at zero, and then it gets faster and faster and faster as it falls down, right? So let's read this problem. An 80-gram autograph baseball rolls off a 1.2-meter high table, strikes the floor, horizontal distance of 0.8 meters away from the table. How fast was it rolling on, on the table before it fell off? So we want to figure out the velocity in the x direction. Okay, so first step, always we need to find the time, right? Any projectile problem, that's what you want to try to do first. So this case, I know the height, and I know height is directly related to time through this, right? Square root of 2 times the height divided by g. So the time is going to be 2 times 1.2 is the height over 9.8, square root of that. So if I do that, I get 0.49 seconds. So that's the time it takes to fall. All right, so now that I know the time it takes to fall, right, I can go figuring out this velocity. So here's an x velocity, here's an x displacement, right? And in the x direction, there's no acceleration. So my only real equation in the x direction is velocity is horizontal displacement over time. And if I want velocity, I can just divide the two, right? So delta x is 0.8. My time is 0.49. So if I do 0.8 divided by my answer from before, I get 1.62 1.62 meters per second. That's the velocity that this thing took off from the table with. Okay, next problem. Man fires a bullet horizontally from 1.8 meters above the ground. If the speed of the bullet was 415 meters per second, how far away does it land? Alright, so this one doesn't have a little picture, but any of these, it really helps to draw a picture. Right. so here's my initial velocity, here's my height, and Here's my delta x, right? So from there to there. And I know my height is 1.8 meters. I put a question mark there, but I know it. It's 1.8 meters. And my velocity is 415 meters per second. I'm trying to solve for horizontal distance. So again, first step, find time. And again, time, if you know the height, is square root of two i over g. Right? If you know the height, you automatically know the time. That should be first thing you're thinking. Okay, So here, let's plug in and solve. So 2 times 1.8 divided by 9.8 square root. That gives me 0.61 seconds. Right? That was easy. Okay, so 2, again, just like the last one, I know my velocity now, and I want to find this horizontal distance, right? So this thing's going to fall something like that. So, in the x dimension, there's only one equation. Velocity is delta x over delta t. So in this case, I'm solving for delta x, right? So I have to rearrange this to get delta x. So I'm going to multiply the delta t over. So that looks like an n. should be a v. So delta x is going to equal velocity times my time interval, right? I just multiply it over algebra. So velocity was 415, my time is 0 0.61, so if I do 415 times my answer from before, that gives me 251.52 seconds. So delta x is 251 point, I'm going to round up, 53 meters. Okay, so last problem. This one is a little different because in this case, I'm not going to know the height. I'm trying to figure out the height, right? So uh, read through it. Standing on a quarry wall, boy tosses a piece of granite. If he throws the rock horizontally with a velocity of 3 meters per second and it strikes the water 4.5 meters away, so that's 4.5 meters, how high above the water is the wall? So I'm trying to figure out my delta y, okay? So again, first step, we always think, okay, I need to find the time. So normally I would say, oh, time is square root of 2y over g, right? But I don't have the height. I need to do this another way. So if you look at what you have, right, see how here I know my 
distance and I know my velocity, right? So if I just look at the x dimension first, I can take my non-accelerating velocity formula. Velocity is delta x over delta t. Hey, look, I know delta x. I know velocity. I could solve for delta t, right? So doing algebra, right? Remember, if you're ever solving for the denominator, I can just swap those two. So if I algebra this, I get delta t is delta x over v, all right? And I know this, and so now I can get time. It's just a different way to get time, right? Based on me knowing both of those things. So delta x is 4.5, velocity is 3. So if I do that, I get a delta t of 4, and that's 1.5 seconds. Okay, so that's the time. All right, so now let's go take the time and figure out the height, right? So we've been using this equation. Time is square root of 2 times y over g, right? We've been using that, you know, to find free fall time. But this equation actually comes from, if I rearrange and solve for delta y, this comes from that quadratic looking displacement equation, the v naught t plus 1 half at squared. And so remember your initial velocity is 0. So this rearranges to say 1 half, whoops, 1 half g t squared, right? This is the last part of that quadratic equation. So look, I know g, I know t, I can solve for delta y. So it's going to be 9.8 times 1.5 squared over 2, right? The half. And if I do that, let's find out. I get 11.025 meters, right? So in this case, I still followed the same steps, right? Except when I got stuck on this one, if I try to use this equation, like, oh no, that doesn't work, right? So I need to think of another way I can get time. So I had to come over here and say, oh, well, I know in the x direction, I already know my two variables, right? So I had to use that to get time and then rearrange this equation to get the height.